So the next thing I'm going to be doing is seating an O-ring on top of that cut piece in between the bottom of that cut piece and another half inch piece and that will seal the water from coming out the end of your bottle. Now in order to do that you need a 3 8 inch piece of tubing which is which is usually not available in a lot of the stores because it's not a super standard size but I read that you can use the inner tube the outer part of a chapstick container and that actually fits perfectly inside one of these half inch tubes you could put the o-ring on top of that and then you'll be putting another half inch piece and that's what will sit that o-ring now the same website recommended using a number 22 o-ring i couldn't find those but I did have these in my shop and those fit perfectly on the water bottle but they're a little bit uh, wide for that three quarter inch pipe. But when I test fit this and put the bottle on there. So when I test fit this and slid the bottle in there, it still slides on really easily. So I think I'm just going to make this as is. And if worse comes to worse and I have to change out that O-ring, there's enough given these that you could take that one off and slide something new on in its place. So I'm going to attach the chapstick tube to my launch tube first using this uh, plumber cement. This stuff's super easy. There's a primer and a cement. You put the purple primer on both ends, the purple and the cement on both ends, and twist your pieces together and hold them for about 30 seconds. So I'm going to let this sit. This pretty much um, hardens in about 30 seconds, but for you, I'm going to at least let it set up for about 15 minutes and it doesn't feel fully cure for about two hours. So I'm not going to mess with it too much now that I just attached it. But what I'm going to do while I'm waiting is start gluing together some other fittings. So that O-ring is going to go on there like that. And then I have another half inch piece of that pipe inside a coupler and that's going to attach like this. And once everything's set up, I could cut this coupler down to height, which will probably be about right there. So I'm going to glue this half inch piece of pipe into this coupler. And then with my bottle, you'll be able to see once this, once this half inch piece of pipe is at the right height, the tip of the bottle will sit on the top of this coupler and that's how everything will be held in place. So while um, some of my parts are setting up, I'm going to start gluing together some of my other parts that I won't be needing until later, but then the glue will be dry. So I have this pressure valve, and that is because the bike pump I'm using to power this does not have a pressure valve. So I have to put a pressure valve in line with the PVC to know what the pressure in the bottle is. So in order to do that, since these threads can't be threaded into PVC automatically, I got a brass reduction coupling that goes from a quarter to a half and that will be threaded onto the end of my pressure gauge. Then from that half I got a half inch PVC fitting that can thread into that brass fitting. Once I have that I could put a little piece of half inch PVC and then put that into a T and the T can go in line with my pump. So for the threaded parts I'm just going to use thread tape. But for these parts, I'll attach the T to the PVC adapter. Then to finish up this assembly, I'm going to be mounting a Schrader valve into an end cap, putting that end cap on another piece of that half inch pipe I cut off, and then attaching it to the one side of the T. So you'll have your pressure gauge here and your Schrader valve here. Now one thing that goes without saying with all these pieces is once I cut them, um, it leaves a little rim around here, so I'm cleaning up the insides and the outsides with a file. I'm not getting super crazy about it, but you want it to be a little clean. 
So in order to put this straighter valve into this end cap, I'm going to be drilling a half inch hole. I'm going to drill it from the end cap because since it bubbles out, you'll be able to center it by going through from the inside. So that half inch hole was a little too small, so I just elongated the hole with a Dremel tool a little bit. That valve in there, my hole didn't turn out as centered as I thought it was going to be, but just elongating that half inch hole a little bit with that Dremel really worked. And you'll know it's seated in there properly when this rim right there starts to stick out the hole right there. And that means that that PVC is wrapped around this lip and it's not going to go back in or come out. So I've let these all set up for a good 15 minutes. This piece that's going to connect and, and sandwich in that o-ring, I marked a half inch and that half inch right here is where that o-ring is going to sit and from that o-ring to the end of my bottle is a half inch. So I'm going to cut that off and then see if everything fits. So with everything in place, you can see that that ring is now right where you want it to be with that spacing. When I first cut this, I measured from the tip up to the end of this PVC piece for a half inch, but what you actually want to do is measure to the o-ring because the o-ring sits at half inch. And I had to sand mine down a little bit, but now it's exactly at half inch. So I'm going to connect this piece to the chapstick tube. I'm going to want to be a little bit neater than I have been being because you don't want a ton of glue on this o-ring. Then I cut off a 12 inch piece of that pipe that can connect like this. And then that's how that's going to slide and sit into my launcher. And then the pipe that comes out through the base, I can put an elbow on it and attach my fittings with my Schrader valve and my pressure gauge. So now it's time to start looking at the launch mechanism. And the launch mechanism just needs to be something that holds this bottle in place while the pressure builds up and something that you can release and that will make the rocket fly. So one of the most popular things people do on the internet is they make them with zip ties and a coupler and the zip ties hook around this rim and then you pull down and the coupler releases. The reason I didn't want to mess around with that one is because I've read that um, if it's not done properly they're prone to breaking and also you're taking um, a downward force and with a string you're turning it into a horizontal force so with pressure in here that usually means you have to tug at that string with a lot of force to be able to convert that force into two separate movements and remove the stopper now since younger dudes are going to be using this my nephews are not super old i wanted something that they could be able to pull the release me mechanism themselves so i wanted to simplify it to something that just uses one lateral force to remove the mechanism so i kind of came up with this design with hinges these are flat surface mount hinges that if you put them on an angle and you attach something to here, they could wrap around the bottle. And I was going to have a spring mechanism here, so, that, so there was going to be some sort of clamp that went like this. And when you pulled the clamp, the springs forced the hinges over and the bottle would release. So when I saw this, I was planning on cutting this in half and attaching this part to my hinge and then shortening this and using this circular hole, just widening it to be that little lip that goes over my bottle. But when I was lining this up on the top of my piece, I realized that this is just about the perfect height and could work perfectly for what I want. Without using the hinges, I can make some sort of track system uh, 
once again bore out this hole so it fits over here and I need to raise it by like an eighth of an inch but I can make some sort of track system out of plastic so that this can just easily slide back and forth when you pull it. So that's kind of where I'm going with this now. I think it will be much easier and faster to build. Before I start messing around with that, like I said, I'm going to film putting, I'm just going to put an elbow on here and cut a piece of pipe to run that Schrader valve and that pressure gauge to my leg and attach it. I'll film that so that um, this glue takes about two hours to fully, fully, fully set up. By the time I'm done messing around with the lock, launch mechanism, this will have set for long enough that I could probably test try the whole piece. To start this launcher release mechanism, I drew a straight line across the tip of that hole and then I used the soda bottle to kind of draw this oversized arch. So I'm going to cut this off with an angle grinder and then grind this down until it is a good fit over uh, that water bottle lip. This is my piece after cutting all that out and then once I used that angle grinder I went back in with a file and really smoothed out all the edges so it doesn't nick the plastic too much or your fingers. And you could see now how that's going to slide on there and I got it so that it covers pretty much that entire lip. So next I had this scrap piece of plexi. Um, it's probably a little less than a quarter inch. I cut it in half and I'm going to attach that to this side and these wings are going to be what slides back and forth in the cradle I make. And it would be much easier, faster, and cheaper to make all these parts out of wood, but since water's involved, since water's involved, if you use wood, as soon as this stuff starts to get wet, it's going to expand and none of your joints will fit. So I'm going to clamp this on there and put some bolts through these pre-drilled holes to um, secure this plexi in place. I was actually thinking of epoxying this together, however this is really going to be a trial run and I think there's going to be some tweaking involved. So I kind of want to put it together from this point out with removable bolts so that if I have to change every, anything it's not permanently attached to anything. happy accident after adding these bolts to the bottom of my setup here is that it's like the exact perfect height now for that bottle. So all I'm going to do now is build a track for this to ride in and out of uh, squarely to the bottle as well as keep it flat on the surface so it can't lift. So what I have is I have some Corian that someone gave me. Um, I use this stuff for glue ups because glue scrapes off of it quite nicely. I don't have a blade specifically for cutting this, but I read online that you could cut it with a 60 tooth blade and that's what I have. I did a tiny little test cut just to try it out and it's working. So since I'm only doing it once, I'm just going to cut this one piece and probably cut it in half for both sides and use that. And the key to doing this is I'm just sliding it through super, super, super slowly. I cut that Corian and it's actually a little bit too thick for what I need it for. So what I'm going to do is I marked where the bottom of this sits and I'm going to cut out a groove on either ends of these because with that 60 tooth blade this stuff cuts really well. Um, you can see the mark. And then this will sit in a groove on here. I could put something on top of it and hold it all into place. 
So I have a few little scraps I cut off. I'm going to test the height on there to make sure it's perfect and then cut those grooves. That's the placement of my plastic and you can see how now that sits in those grooves. So what I'm going to do now is on top of these to hold everything in place I have these metal pieces that are used in decking and I'm going to put them like that. There's a little bit of space between this and the metal but I could put a rubber shim or a plastic shim here if need be. So I'm going to place these on top and then clamp the whole assembly down and then probably test run pulling this back and forth to make sure it works. I have everything lined up just by eye. So I'm using this back edge which I know is square to line everything up. And this is moving back and forth really well. There's no snags or anything. So I'm going to attach these plates through the Corian, through the bottom with some bolts because this, remember, is hollow. So I'm just going to use these holes, drill bigger holes, probably put three or four on each side, and then um, drill out this hole through the plexi so I could put a piece of rope there. Then I'm probably going to add a stop at the back so this doesn't always slide out the entire piece. And then this is probably going to be ready for a test flight. And I actually test fired this yesterday. I didn't film it just because, to be perfectly honest, I didn't think that this was going to work well the first time out of the bat. I thought there would be some tweaking that had to be done. But it actually fired perfectly. It actually shot over uh, the roof of my garage. So it had to go at least 40 feet or so up in the air. And then so once that fired, I put a little stop here so this can't come out of its cradle. I know it's... Ah! That bottle disintegrated! <laughs>